Thank you, darling. Awesome. <laughs> Praise God. And also, too, my cousin's just walked back into the room. Must have gone to the toilet. Willie, could you stand up, mate? That's my cousin. I've told everyone my cousin was here, and then you walked out. Could you? Stand up. <laughs> Big round. <laughs> the only reason I did that was to embarrass him. He's been embarrassing me my whole life, so it was so cool. So, and, I, and I know he looks like my uncle, but he's actually my cousin. So uh, just to praise God. Uh, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Psalms, Psalm 150. Psalm 150, verse 1. I've got to read the whole Psalms, just six verses. Psalm 150, 1 to 6. And also, this is our last Sunday night uh, service, but next week we actually have our Christmas carols at 4 o'clock here. So I encourage you all to come along. And then also, you're most welcome to double up the week after. We're going to be doing our Christmas carols and banquet over at Pimpamar as well. And so uh, feel, free to, feel free to come to both, but you have to register for the Pimpamar one uh, because it's actually going to be a banquet dinner uh, as well. Uh, Psalm 150, verse 1 says this. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty firmament. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the lute and the harp. Praise Him with the timbrel. Sounds amazing. And dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Praise Him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And just in case you didn't know what he meant, he finishes off with praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I just ask and pray that you help us to be people who are overcomers. I thank you and praise you for the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, there used to be TV shows, or maybe they still are, but I don't watch much free to air, um, called World's Worst Something. You know, World's Worst Drivers, World's Dumbest Criminals, and that sort of thing. The title of my message tonight is World's Worst Excuses for Not Praising God. <laughs> Um, I've been a pastor for 20 years. It's an amazing the amount of excuses people come up with for not praising God, as if they think it's some kind of option. But the Bible says in Psalm 150 verse 6, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Turn the person next to you and breathe on them. <laughs> Feel that warm sticky thing on the side of your face? That's actually somebody's breath. So what that means is this, if you've got breath, you're supposed to praise God. But it's amazing the amount of people that come up with excuses for not praising God. And so I want to talk to you today about world's, the worst excuses for not praising God that I have heard in my time in ministry. And if you're taking notes, feel free to write down the left-hand side of your page the word stupid. Because every single one of these points starts with one of these letters. The first worst excuse for not praising God is number one, sin. Sin. Sometimes people don't praise God because there's sin in their life and they somehow think they're not worthy of praising God. A uh, number of years ago when I was first in ministry and I was still playing some AFL football on the Saturday and I remember I was playing uh, and I was actually my first year in ministry, it was 2000, and I was uh, playing a game of footy on the Saturday and I lost my temper on the field and uh, I said a swear word. And, uh, and, and, and it, was a, it was a pretty naughty one uh, and... Um, <clears throat> And look, I don't have that issue anymore. It's been months since I've said something. So, um, and I just remember at the time, as my first year, I, I lost my temper. I said this swear word and I just felt horrible. Like I just felt completely condemned. And the next day I was in church and literally I couldn't praise God because the band was playing and they were praising and worshipping God and I literally could not enter in because I just kept thinking to myself, how could I possibly praise God? Oh, I'm a pastor. I said that naughty word yesterday. I feel terrible about it. I can't do it. And it was hilarious because halfway during the praise and worship, our senior pastor got up on the stage and he stopped the praise and worship for a bit. And he says, the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And so we praise God not because we're worthy, we praise God because He's worthy. And he said, some of you may be under condemnation today because of some of the things going on in your life. Even in spite of that, we still need to praise God. And then he said this. He said, hey, you could have even sworn yesterday. And I remember thinking to myself, who told him? I couldn't believe it. And he said, but we don't praise Him because we're worthy. We praise Him because He's worthy. 
The Bible says that when Jesus entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday before he was crucified, he was coming down and riding on a donkey and people were laying palm trees and their coats on the ground and they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And as he was going down on the donkey, I'm sure he knew what was going on in some of their lives. But he didn't go along and stop some of them and said, hey, 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 I know what you did last night. You don't deserve to praise me. He didn't do that. In fact, when the Pharisees came up to him and they said, Jesus, stop these people praising you. He said, if they don't praise me, even the rocks will cry out. We don't praise him because of what we have done. We praise him because he is worthy. And if you have sin in your life, which some of us might have, I want to let you know there's freedom and there's liberty in him and there's no condemnation. And even if you don't have the full victory, you can still praise him anyway. We don't praise him because of what we've done. We praise Him because He's worthy. So sin is not an excuse for not praising God. The second, world, the second worst excuse for not praising God starts with T and it's terrible singing. <laughs> Some people praise God because they're a terrible singer. And it's true. Have you heard them? I know there's been times I've been in church and someone started singing. I remember one particular time, seriously. I, I was at church and I was in the front row and it wasn't here it was, it was at Pimpama. And uh, no, no. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. Just kidding. It was morning at Ready Creek. No. And um, just joking. And, um, and so I was on the front row at a particular church, and this lady started singing behind me. And I don't even want to call it singing uh, because, you know, it, it had the same effect on me as someone dragging their fingernails down a blackboard. And everything in me wanted to turn around and say, Would you just shut up? Trying to praise God. How can I praise God with you screeching in my ears? But here's the thing. Even though it annoys me, God doesn't care. The Bible says in Psalm 150 verse 6, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. It doesn't say let everyone with a great voice praise the Lord. It doesn't say let everybody with perfect pitch praise the Lord. It doesn't say let everybody with a recording contract praise the Lord. It doesn't say let everyone with a YouTube channel praise the Lord. It just says let everything that has breath praise Praise the Lord. If you've got breath, then we're supposed to praise Him. If you've got breath, it doesn't matter how you sound. And you need to understand, even compared to, uh, compared to what God is listening to all the time, even if you've got a great voice, compared to what He's listening to, it's nothing. The Bible said that um, heaven is His throne and the earth is His footstool. And He's surrounded by angels who are worshipping Him 24-7. And they have beautiful operatic voices, a little bit like this. Worship you, Lord. <laughs> Praise you, God. And they're worshiping him all the time. And here's the thing then he can hear us as well at the same time. You're the greatest. You're the greatest. This is how I fight my battles. And he can actually hear both. And not only that, the angels that are singing around him, they actually don't have to take a breath. So they hold their notes forever. Worship you, Lord. And they just keep going. Oh. So he can hear them and he can hear us. Worship you, Lord. This is how I fight my battles. This is Worship you, Lord. Praise you, God. This is how I fight my battles. And here's the thing. When we start praising him, he essentially turns to the angels and says, boys, quiet. Oh. They can just hear us. This is how I fight my battle. You can imagine the angels looking at each other going. And God says, oh, guys, thank you so much for praising me. Now my, now my people at King's Church are praising me. So I'm going to send my presence down there. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. He's not talking about angels, man. They don't breathe. He's talking about you and me. So even if you've got a terrible voice, and some of you do, God doesn't care. We just won't give you a microphone, but go to your heart's content and just praise Him with all you've got. It doesn't matter if you've got a terrible voice. The third, Trisha, you can put your hand down. The third one is this. The third worst excuse for not praising God. I don't even know if it's a word, but it's unhappiness. Sometimes people don't praise God because they're unhappy, because of things going on in their life. I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life where things haven't been going well. And sometimes the one thing you don't want to do is actually praise God. But here's the thing, even if things aren't going your way, 
even if you've got disappointment and discouragement happening in your life, that's still not an excuse for not praising God. In fact, the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of His people. So what that means is this, when we praise God, His presence comes. And in His presence is fullness of joy. So if you want to access the joy of the Lord when things aren't going well, what you need to do is start praising Him. The Bible says we put on the garment of praise in exchange for the spirit of heaviness. So if you're feeling heavy, if you're feeling weighed down, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling discouraged and you don't feel like praising, that's the time when you have to discipline your mouth and start opening it and start lifting your voice to Him and start praising and worshipping Him because as you do, His presence comes and in His presence is fullness of joy. You know, there's been many, many times in my life, I, I remember the time that when we had the, um, went through the Brisbane floods of 2011, and I remember I actually hadn't even been to our house yet. I'd found out that our house was flooded, but it was so flooded, that area, you couldn't even get close to our house. And that night, our church was putting on a conference. And I remember I went to that conference, and I was on the front row, knowing that my house was just being flooded as we speak right there. And as the praise and worship came on, I did not feel like praising God. But there was something in me that realized that in spite of what's going on in my life, in spite of disappointment, in spite of discouragement, in spite of things not going on my way, going my way, I will still praise Him. When you praise Him and you don't feel like it, that's called a sacrifice of praise. And you've positioned yourself for some of the greatest breakthroughs. The Bible says that Paul and Silas were in prison. And at the midnight hour, when things were going wrong, they decided to praise God. And the Bible says that when they started praising God, their shackles were broken off and the prison doors were open and they received their breakthrough. Everything was going wrong. And in spite of that, they still praised Him and received their breakthrough. So if things aren't going your way, if you're feeling unhappy, if you're feeling discouraged, if you're feeling depressed, just take control of your mouth and lift up your voice and praise Him. And you'll be amazed at the breakthroughs that you'll position yourself for. The fourth worst excuse for not praising God is pride. It's pride. Sometimes we don't praise God because... We're more worried about how we look. You know, I don't know about you, but there's been times when I've felt a little bit, you know, if other people aren't praising God, there's been times when I've worried whether I should and that sort of thing. And, but here's the thing, that's actually pride. If I'm more worried about how I look, then my focus is wrong. There are some people that don't praise Him because they're worried about their reputation. You know, there's a story in the Bible and it talks about King David and the Ark of the Covenant was coming back to Jerusalem. And he was so excited about it that he just started dancing alongside it. And as he started dancing and praising God, all of a sudden his clothes just started flying off. And before you knew it, he was down to his jock strap, praising and worshipping God. Actually I, remember, actually, I remember one time, one particular youth group, uh, there was one guy and all of a sudden in the, in the mosh pit, he just started taking his clothes off. And before he knew, he was down to his jocks and everybody scattered around him. And they had to take him out. And he said, well, you know, King David did it. And uh, they're like, no, 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 champion, can't do that here. But anyway, um, <clears throat> and when he came into the city dressed like that, praising and worshipping God, he'd forgotten himself. His wife named Michael was at the balcony of their apartment looking down at him with disgust. And she said to him when he came in, she said, how's the king dressed like this in front of the servant girls? And David said, well, I don't care. The Ark of the Covenant has come back and I'm going to praise him all the more. Nothing's going to stop me. And the Bible said from that day, Michael was barren. So what it means is this, her barrenness was because of her pride in relation to praise and, the, and, and into praise in the presence of God. If you're willing to praise God and worship Him, what that means is you'll have more of a fruitful life. When you continue to praise and worship Him and put aside your pride and how other people think or what other people are worried about, if you're just willing to praise Him, you'll be amazed at the fruitfulness that God will bring into your life. The fifth worst excuse for not praising God, starts with I. And it's talking about introverted personalities. <clears throat> Some people don't praise God because they're an introvert. That's just who I am. I'm, in a, I'm not into all that hype. 
I'm not into all that, you know, lifting my voice and that sort of thing. I prefer the preaching. I like the word. But I'm not into all that, you know, that hype and that praise stuff. I'm introverted. Well, the Bible doesn't say in Psalm 150 verse 6, let all the sanguines praise the Lord. (laughs) It doesn't say let all the extroverts praise the Lord. It just says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. It doesn't matter about your personality. It doesn't matter about your disposition. It doesn't matter about your nationality. It doesn't say, let all the Africans jump around and praise the God and the white people sit there. It doesn't say that. It says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Regardless of your personality, regardless of what you think. I was talking to the church this morning and, and was talking about the fact that the Bible says has a number of different nuances for the word praise in the Old Testament. In the Hebrew language, there's a number of different nuances. Whenever you read praise, it, it means something slightly different. But there's always one thing in common. It always means expressive. So this is not praise. This is not praise. This is not praise. Praise. Praise means to open up your mouth and praise God. That's what it means. And the Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. And there's been times you can come into a church service like this. Our band was really awesome and the presence of God was filling people's praise. But there still might have been some people here just looking and thinking, I don't know what what the fuss was about. I'm here to let you know if you would open up your mouth and praise God, His presence will come and it doesn't matter about how you look and it doesn't matter if your personality is introverted. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And the last thing it says is this. Oh, the last worst excuse starts with D. And this is actually the biggest one. Don't have to. Can't make me. Well, actually you do. Because the Bible says, Psalm 150, verse 6, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. If you want breath, you better praise God. Amen? Because he's actually given us that breath. And it's amazing. You know, I've learned as a pastor over the years, there's been times I've been in meetings and you encourage people to praise God and some people just still looking at you like this. Can't make me do it, pastor. Don't have to. Well, I'm here to let you know, you do have to. Because Jesus said, if we don't do it, even the rocks will cry out. And I don't want a rock doing my job. If I've got breath, then it's my job to actually praise God. You know, um, many years ago, um, I used to find that I could tell people what to do, but that doesn't mean that they would naturally do it. It doesn't mean that they would, you know, you, could, you may have heard of the old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. I remember one time um, uh, I knew of this particular family that they had a child that was very fussy with their eating. It was an infant. And so what they did was that they actually bought this particular high chair for that child. And it was a special high chair that meant that they couldn't wriggle out. And so they put this child in this seat, had the bench there, couldn't slide out, shoulders strapped down. So all the child could do was this. And then I remember the father grabbing the baby food and saying to the babe and saying to the baby, "Come on mate, open up your mouth. It's dinner time." But because the child was a fussy eater, he would go like this. Come on, mate. You know it's good for you. Open up your mouth. So if that doesn't work, you've got to take it to the next level. Come on. You come to your (laughs) plane. Open up your mouth. Come on. You know it's good for you. Here, come to your plane. Open up your mouth. So then what that couple actually did was the husband said to the wife, honey, hold his head. So they grabbed the baby's head, forced the baby's mouth open, and then the baby started screaming. Ah, ah, ah. The dad got the spoon. Ah, ah. Brought the spoon close to the baby's mouth. Ah, ah. Put in the baby's mouth. Ah, ah. Husband said to the wife, okay, shut his mouth. Pulled the spoon out. Husband stood back and said, okay, honey, let go. And even then, the baby would be like, little baby, didn't want to eat. I used to feel like that sometimes as a pastor. (laughs) Come on, praise the Lord. (laughs) We've got the latest Bethel music. (laughs) Band's been practicing really hard. We'll turn down the lights so nobody sees you. 
Come on, praise the Lord. And even then, still some people, don't have to, do have to. Psalm 150 verse 6, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Amen. And I just thought it would be really, really cool if we finished off our last night service